Welcome everyone. Uh, we have a knowledge exchange today. It's called fact checking as a business model. Uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, I will tell a little bit of the background of this initiative. It's the, this exchange is the last one in a series of exchanges between media houses. They are funded by UNESCO and they're carried out by Free Press Unlimited. Uh, ultimately, the initiative is focused on contributing to media viability by offering media houses a platform to exchange more intimate knowledge with each other. Uh, all of these exchanges are recorded and will be published on the website of Free Press Unlimited. So if you've missed any, don't worry. Um, so uh, we have a few invited par participants here today as well uh, from different media houses around the world. Um, and those who are present, uh, you're welcome to add questions in the chat or in the Q&A function. And at the last 10 to 15 minutes of this exchange, we will try to answer as many questions as possible. Um, so today, uh, the conversation discusses fact-checking. And we have with us uh, Laura Sommer, the Executive Director of Chequeado. Uh, and also with us, uh, Layal Bahnam, who is a Program Manager at Mahara News, which is based in Lebanon. So we will focus on how a medium can develop a business model around fact-checking content. I will now first give the floor to Layal. Um, could you start introducing Maharat News, please? Yes, sure. Thank you, Evalina, for, for this interesting exchange. Uh, and thank you, for Laura, for accepting to uh, participate as well with us and share uh, her best like practices uh, with us. It's always very interesting to know from each other's and to learn from each other's experiences. Uh, I work as the program manager in Maharat Foundation that incubates Maharat News. So the idea of Maharat News came out from 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 us as journalists and the uh, organization working on the promotion of freedom of expression and media development as well. We advocate all the time for independent uh, uh, quality journalism, and we train uh, journalists and activists to produce uh, quality journalism or quality content. So in our region, there is a lack of evidence-based journalism, so, and especially in Lebanon. So we are a, a country that is divided with a lot of... Uh, of uh, uh, political divisions as well so and and we always we always struggle with not having accurate information because of the media capture that we have in the mainstream media every media is affiliated to a certain politician or a religious sect so so consumers are not able information consumers are not able to uh, uh, have evidence based uh, information this is where the idea of maharat news came to provide the evidence-based journalism on issues of accountability in Lebanon. So we started like um, uh, training journalists to uh, uh, change that, their mindset to, to, to produce more uh, uh, pieces that are based on evidence, not opinion, which is not a custom here in the, in the traditional media. And then we started being exposed more and more to fact-checking initiatives. We organized a conference in Lebanon in 2016 on media viability and, uh, fact and, and fake news. And uh, we received a lot of organizations from around the world, uh, like uh, uh, Polity Fact, like uh, Lupas, like uh, uh, Africa uh, Fact Check. So, so, and we had the idea of creating our own platform in Lebanon, and this is how we started. We we are now members of IFCN, the International Fact Checking uh, uh, Network, and for us, it was a learning process to be members in IFCN because it took us some months to uh, to adjust our content and also all, all our policies so that we would fit into the criteria to be a member and we always we always try try to learn and this is why it's very important now to think more about viability and about how can we since now we are well established so we've we've been accredited for so this is the second time we get the accreditation from IFCN we've been monitoring and, and fact-checking rumors around COVID-19 in the last period. And currently we are working on, we will be working on fact-checking the elections in Lebanon. We have elections in May, 2022. 
two. So yeah, this year in few months. So uh, so we have a lot of work to do. But at the same time, we have to think about our sustainability and our viability and how can we monetize the content that we are producing. We did not reach this area yet because we are still relying on Maharat Foundation to get the funds for Maharat News. So this is why it's very important to understand from, from Laura how were they able to to create this niche and to 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 be able to uh, sustain themselves is it only by uh, by uh, relying on international grants or do you have diverse funding models so this is what we like we would like to hear and to benefit from uh, from your experience uh, as well thank you no thank you and it's a pleasure for me to to join you and to join the people that that are now there or or perhaps in the future looking for the video. Um, I, I always say that these exchanges are excellent, not only to exchange the, the success of our, of our initiative, but also to, to, to share the challenge or the things that we didn't necessarily do well, but, but can help others not to, to take that road perhaps. And then that's that's why I'm always open to to conversations that are interesting with with colleagues because most of the problems of the challenge are more more or less the same in in countries where we have um, in some cases problems with the access to information with the not necessary independent media in the mainstream media uh, etc. Then just just a short story about. Chequeado. Chequeado is the first uh, fact checking initiative uh, in Latin America and really in a South country around the world. Because when, when we start in 2010, there were just three fact checkers in the US, two in France, and one in UK. And as you know, Argentina is not necessarily US, France, or UK in terms of access to information or the strength of, of public institutions or the talent of uh, corruption, etc. Then uh, the founders of Chequeado were three scientists. They were visionaries and they were also consumers that wasn't happy with the offers that the media in Argentina gave them or gave them. Then they decide not to wait for others to to create the, the media to get better informed, to have public interest journalists, and as you said, uh, more evidence-based journalists, but they, they decide to create it. And then perhaps one of the things that made us from the beginning different from others and innovative in, a, in some way is that since the day one, Chequeado not only check the public, uh, Asian discourse, but also the media discourse or the social leaders discourse, discourse. And then they were not just a project to make watchdog of the state or the public institutions, but also the private institutions. Because in some of our countries, uh, the, it, that power that is not necessarily the formal power is really strong and in, in some cases affect in a big way the freedom of expression of the access of information of citizens then that make or give us a kind of advance when when in 2016 all the people start after trump or brexit of the referendum in colombia about the no about uh, this information and we already been doing some of that work uh, since 20, 2010 and because we we fact check and we contrast all the content content that can cause harm and where virus or where popular then that was a kind of starting of all the movement of fact checking that today we have more than 300 organizations around the world in more than 19 countries. And as Laja said, uh, the International Fat Checking Network that, that I was, we, we start with that idea 
in an event in Argentina, in Buenos Aires, where a group of fact checkers said, there's a lot of people and there's some government using the name of fact checking or fact checker to, to make propaganda or to make journalists that wasn't necessarily evidence-based journalists. Then we, in that uh, moment, decide to create a code of principles with five principles related to transparency of our funding, transparency of our uh, team, transparency of our methodology. We, we should have a correction policy, but that not have it in your website and not use it, obviously have a transparency correction policy that you, you use every time you made a mistake because we are human and it's, it's, we are able to make mistakes. And also one of that principles that are especially interesting in countries where Argentina and some countries in Latin America have a strong polarization. Also, one of the principles is that we have to use exactly the same way of, of looking or the same, in Spanish we said, use the same vara, uh, uh, look with the same eyes uh, to official uh, government or to the opposition leader or something, someone that is in the plat public sector or someone that is in the private sector. And then um, about our business model, when we start uh, as in lost, or lot of the digital media around the world, we, we start with, with the money from one of the founders that, that he wasn't necessarily a super rich person. He was a, an, a man that used to have some, some money and decide not to invest in, I don't know, holidays for their grandchildren, but he decided to invest on in create this foundation. We are a non-for-profit. And, and since the beginning, uh, the founders know that Chequiaro wasn't their own project. They, they think about the project since the beginning in the bylaws and in the rules, the procedures, thinking the project that don't make them to be part of. They, they think the project as a collective project. Then um, they start online in October 2010 with, with two really young journalists, Olivia and Matias. Olivia uh, now is the uh, director of impact research and new initiatives in the organization. Then she's still there and, and I expect she to be there for a lot of more time. And Matias, that in that time was uh, studying in the university, that now he's the, the um, general editor of, the, of Chequeado. Um, and I joined in May 2012. And I have three goals in that time that continue being my goals now. One, it was we want to have uh, more impact in our work. The second was we need to, to make more professional all the areas of the organization. It's not just that we have to have a really good journalists in the newsroom, but don't take care about the funding or don't take care about the technology or not take care about the administration issues. We, we want a really high level and professional organization in all the areas that we're gonna work on. And the third one was exactly made Chequeado independent from the founders and also from everyone, everyone. And then since the beginning, we decided to take the long trip or the long road and not necessarily looking for someone that give us a lot of money. We, we define a model that was diversified. Since the beginning, we tried to ask a lot of people and a lot of institutions, a small amount of money. And we didn't ask to anyone a lot of money. And that's why to have independence, to be autonomous, 
you don't have problems if someone decides not to support us more because they don't like one of our contents or or they don't like the i don't know the focus on education that we decide to have or etc and then especially to your question if we have just international grants or or different incomes we have different incomes and the the answer is we have the incomes from all the places that we can if they are transparent that's the rule the rule is we don't receive money from any company, government, or person that don't allow us to tell our community that they are supporting us. And we don't receive money from any government, not local, not province, not national government from Argentina. Because as our focus is in Argentina, uh, we don't receive money from government or public sector from our country but obviously we receive money and and i i want to be transparent and clear on that we receive money for example from international cooperation from netherlands or international cooperation from german or etc then it's not that we don't receive public funds it's just that we don't receive public funds from our own country um, and and about the model i don't know if you want to to ask me, but about the model is we have an event where companies and people uh, support us. And this is an annual event. It's, it's a kind of party or, or informal dinner to celebrate uh, public interest in journalists. We do that event or we used to do it. We used to, to have that event before the pandemic because during the pandemic we, we we didn't be able to, to to do that but we have that event we have also uh, we monitor it um, we republish our content in some of the main media in our country and we manage to to receive a small income don't imagine that they pay us a lot in some cases they don't even pay us our our work in terms of what time we invest on the piece but as a general principle we try to to receive money when we it's not that if someone republish our content once or or for example during the lecturer period that we do a collective project with all the media in the country in that moment we don't receive pay from them but if we have for example a regular column i have a every monday i have a tv column and then the tv channel pay chequeado for for that uh, space and laura when did you start these kind of paid partnerships and at the beginning you started with a model based on supporters whatever they were from the private sector or the public sector as i understood but not argentinian of course public yeah. sector so, uh, so the first question is, how, how did it impact your growth over the years? So you started in 2010. So how, 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 how did it impact your growth? You, you started having savings and then deciding to grow your team, to have these goals that you talked about, to have more impact, to, to work on more professional areas and also to, to, to be more independent. So how, how did it go before uh, uh, going back to the question of paid partnerships? Yeah, that, that's obviously it's not that they are just one model, but in our case, um, we think big and grow small is is each year we decide this is the priority this in this time and then for example in that moment we decide to uh, to have someone that were more uh, senior in innovation or in education or but i was since the beginning one of the things that perhaps are were different from my my mindset from other journalists is that I always had a clear view that Chequiaro wasn't necessary um, a traditional media with a team with just excellent journalists. 
since the beginning, I know that our uh, mission that is to improve the quality of public debate need in the team profiles that are different. They are not necessarily just reporters or uh, communication experts, etc. Obviously, we, we are a lot of journalists in the team, but, but not just. And then the first two years, or the first 2010, 2011, 2012, and the first of 2013, they were just the money from the founders. And I can say perhaps some friends of them, perhaps some friends or family from me or some other team members that, that help us. And, and a lot of people told us it's a great idea. Okay, then if it is a great idea and it's not necessarily a great idea for, I don't know, build my house or buy a car, please help us because this is a public interest project that gonna make your country better in the same way that my country better, then help me. And, and then my idea always was, um, don't be ashamed to ask money for your work because journalists, high quality journalists need money. It's impossible to do quality journalists without, without funds. Then, uh, try to involve other people to support the work that you decide to do. I decided to work on this area and not necessarily in a company in the area of communication where, where I can have more money each month because I'm involved and I care. Then I ask and invite others also to, in a way, uh, involve, get involved. Then in the beginning, it was a team of four persons. After a while, we were seven. Uh, perhaps we were during two or three years, less than 10. And, and we, nowadays we are 38 people full time in the team. And also we have 14 consultants that are an year consulting, especially in different projects that we have. And then we are more than 50. But, but I don't recommend anyone that start a project to start with a, with a team of 50 uh, people. Um, and also another characteristic that perhaps is useful for, for other people is, is interesting in the beginning to ask people to be volunteer in the high level. And then uh, uh, at the beginning, all the team together except me and one person were working on, on they were the first job, first job uh, in Chequeado. But for example, we have a consulting in IT or technology issues um, helping uh, to, to design the strategy. And then have volunteers in that in in that way is also useful for the starting. Then we we miss you for a while, but I was just saying that that at the beginning, as as we didn't have money to 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 invite or to to hire people that were senior, we have a. Uh, junior people in most of the areas uh, and some senior people that were volunteers working from outside but helping us to design this strategy and then for example all the technology lab was during the first five years with consulting from outside that that helped us because they 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 were interesting about our mission and we convince them that they can donate us their talents. How, how do you start on the business plan that you have? For example, you were talking about projects. So you have different projects. How, how do you do, do you, do you stay on the same content? Or for example, if you had a project on fact-checking, let's say uh, uh, 
uh, things related to oil and gas, and this is not your priority according to your editorial policy, let's say. So do you change your content based on, on whatever funding you have? Your, your question for me is one of the essential questions or one of the essential advice for anyone that is working on starting a new project, not just a new media, but any nonprofit or any uh, initiative that needs funds from projects. It's, it's essential to have uh, your goals, your plan, and you, sh you can be super flexible in the ways you work on your goals. But your goals are your goals. And if you, if you decide just to do things because of the money is there and your goals are here, you are not going to achieve your goals. That's at least my learning from that. Then uh, it's much um, more clever to say in some cases, no, thank you. If you want to support us to do that, it's not our time to do it. And someone else is gonna come. I'm sure about that. If you are doing interest, good journalists in a country that need it, and you, you start to have a team that start to be specialists in the way that grants are writing, or you have someone that know how to approach the companies to, in some cases, they are companies that are working on social inter entrepreneurs, uh, social responsibly, and then they are able to support some education initiatives or some initiatives to, to create materials that can help citizens, not necessarily to, to buy their products, it's not that you have to, to do what they want, is, is to have clear where the points where what they are looking for and what you are looking for can be in an intersection. Yes, uh, and, and is your revenue model only based on the content you produce because you... I miss your, your question, but I, if I was right, is you ask me is we have incomes from things that are not necessarily our content it was that yes yes if your revenue model is only based on the content you produce or other activities or events that are not necessarily related like the event that you mentioned the annual yeah event. Yeah, yeah the answer is the the content revenues are not necessarily the main revenue uh, most of our our incomes uh, are not related with with our with our content. Uh, the incomes from our content they are some projects that we have with big platforms and with some media, but are not necessarily the the biggest amount of of our budget. Part of our budget also comes from donations from companies or people, and also come from grants that help us. In, in some cases, we have a core grant uh, to, to help to build a network of fact checkers in all the region. Uh, in 2014, we created a network that is called LATAM Chequea. In that time, there were no one doing fact checking in all Latin America. And we were sure that in some countries, they were the same challenge that we, we find in, found in Argentina. Then we helped other media to create their own fact checking projects and now we are 33 organizations in 18 countries working together for example during the pandemic that was amazing because as you imagine most of the content that were disinformation related to the treatments of covid or uh, the the ways you can protect or nowadays about the disinformation related to vaccines and not just Argentinian disinformation. They are content yeah, that they are, have, they are global ones. And when they start to be yeah. in, say, in Spanish or in Portuguese, all around the, the region, we, we saw it. Then if someone check it, 
that can help a colleague in other country uh, to have half of their work or more than half of their work ready. And then um, work collaborative was also uh, a principle that we have on mind since the beginning. And collaborative was collaborative with other journalists, collaborative with, with the mainstream media. When, when I start and I, some colleagues, I explained them that we were able or open to republish our content in some of the mainstream media in Argentina. Some people look me in a way of saying, are you sure you are going to do that? Because they are not necessarily transparent or they are not necessarily. And my answer was exactly the same that my answer today when someone questioned us because we tried to make or to put our content also in the big platform is, is we need to be in the place where people is. Mm. Uh, and, and how do you how do you yeah, do you sell yourself or your content for these uh, uh, media, traditional media who have their own agendas, but they have more influence, of course, because they are mainstream. So this is your pragmatic strategy to work with these media. So how do you sell your content accordingly to this kind of media that could be, for, for example, a business model for us as well? Yeah, the, uh, our principle is they don't decide what I publish. They, they, I agree with them that I'm going to have a space, for example, every Saturday. And then during the week on Wednesday, I send them three issues that we already publish in our website and then decide from that three issues what I republish. But it's not that Chequeado work with the mainstream media agenda. We work with our own agenda. Yeah, and they, how do they allocate you the, the, the space? So you don't pay for the space. No, they pay us. They pay you. How did you reach this stage? We, trying to convince them, I think it's a kind of, you should try to establish your media associated with some principles that some media want to be partnership with you. For example, if, if, if you are a mainstream media that you are not necessarily uh, having all the principles related to transparency, then you want to partner with Chequeado. Because Chequeado is working all the time, asking people, I'm not just saying you should suspect or you should fact check politicians or businessmen. I ask citizens also to check us. Then uh, my, my recommendation or my advice is if you are starting a project, perhaps it's not necessarily a good idea the first day to, to knock the door of the mainstream media. But after you, start to work, you have some network on your social network, perhaps you start to have uh, not necessarily a big campaign in terms of, of money, but a campaign that can be uh, memorable because it was uh, innovative or different or something, that then approach them and ask them, why don't you partner with us? We can give you some things that we don't have. We can, we can give you uh, good journalists and evidence-based journalists uh, uh, for sure, cheaper than what it's going to be if you start to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Uh, uh, sorry, my internet is really very bad. It's cutting a lot. I wanted to ask you about the, the, the big tech companies like Facebook, like the, the Meta now. So yeah. they all... You can send me if the question was more or less this. You, you, how we can manage to have project with the platform, and what is, uh, how is our relationship with them? If it was that, uh, is more or less the same uh, approach that we have with the mainstream media. Is we have a partnership with with some of the of the platforms to put our content there and to approach and reach people that in other way we are not necessarily reaching in our website or in our own social um, uh, network accounts. But it's not necessarily that uh, we are not in a panel talking about that we need 
I don't know, more transparency about the algorithm or that we need a, a lot of more invest on, on, on media literacy uh, and is, is, so we have not tried this third third party fact checkers. We we are a third party fact checking. We, ah. we we are part of the program since 2018. But in our case, uh, as we have a diversity model of funding, uh, if uh, next year they decide to close that program, it's not necessarily a problem for us. Yes. Uh, I, I'm not saying it's not a problem. Uh, it's, it's, it's not that we depend on them. Then we do that project because we can reach people that in other way we can't. And the metrics about that show it clearly because um, one of the challenges of a lot of fact checkers or uh, investigative journalists about around the world or uh, public interesting journalists in some cases, one of the problems is that we are reaching people that are more or less used to consume or want uh, or are more or less used to be interested on this type of journalists. They are interesting on public policy or they are interesting on democracy institutions, etc. And the challenge is how can we reach other people, people that are not necessarily reading politics or economy in the newspaper, people that are not necessarily looking for the news in, on TV. They are, they are a kind of except, excepticals and they, they don't want to listen. But at least in Argentina, where the vote is mandatory, every two years they go to vote and they have to decide. And then give them better information to them is part of our our mission then being being in the place where they are uh, is is one of the things that we are all the time trying uh, to 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 go for and laura how much do you do you invest in 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 uh, marketing so that you could be able to raise more funding for example we invest less than what we should and and in Argentina, we have a kind of or phrase that is en casa de palo, cuchillo, en casa de herrero, cuchillo de palo. That is, as we are communication uh, professionals and so on, um, we start to having marketing and communication campaigns and an area of communication after, I can say, it, uh, six years of running the project and that one of the things that they they were necessary a good practice when when we start i said part of the interesting compensation can be that i told the the, the people, people that they there the things that we didn't do well and uh, that was one is we 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 didn't invest enough in in marketing or in communication or in institutional communication. Um, and if I uh, should recommend someone is perhaps you can do it the first year or the first month, but start as soon as possible with that. Try to think about your brand. Try to think about the slogan of your brand. Try to think about how you can engage with the community. How can you... Um, since 2019, we have a partnerships with one of the biggest um, uh, publicity ag agency in Argentina that give us pro bono their creativity. And we, we have uh, annual campaigns of, of uh, marketing ah. or communication about our, our projects. Okay. Uh, and, and that's something also that can be replicated. Perhaps in your country, there are also people that is working on how they can sell more coffee or machines or etc. They want to have a public interest in project to help them. 
Yeah, and and uh, Laura, what about uh, monetizing technology? So you've been investing in technologies like the Czechia bot, or uh, uh, we've been trying to doing the same. So we developed an, a, a software that will would help we're still in the development phase but for you you're at more advanced so why did you this automation that you're doing to search for claims that should be taken for fact checking etc how accurate is it and and based on your experience uh, could it be monetized it reduces human resources could it be sold and and like the the, the this would be considered an investment that would enter back into the uh, the, the the organization uh, there, are, there's um, a lot of interesting questions there in your in, in your intervention. Is how accurate is Checkabot? The answer is now is really accurate, but it's not necessary that that, that happened at the beginning in languages that are not English, because Checkabot works in Spanish, and at the beginning it was difficult. For example, the numbers in Spanish don't use a comma; they use a point, and that for the but it was really hard to develop and this is just a small detail that to to make you be be uh, awareness about that uh, work on technology and automatization of fact checking for example in languages that are not uh, that is not english is more hard or is harder than than in english um, but nowadays the Chikiabot help us a lot. Half of the fat checks that we do are not fat checks that we found, but Chikiabot bring us. All the reporters every morning enter to a platform where they can look for a lot of statements that Chikiabot bring us, because Chikiabot read 30 newspapers in the country every day, all the presidential speeches, all the speeches that are in the Congress, and with and most of the things that the public leaders do in social networks, and he has the chance to difference facts from opinions, and then they bring us statements that are checkable. And we are all the time continue with the development, and nowadays they is not that they just give us the statement but also the better source source the checkia bot identified based on our uh, articles from the past um, and the reason why we do that, we do that is uh, that i as i said um, a while ago journalists a good journalist is expensive and uh, for fact checking and this information, uh, times matter a lot. Then we need to be quicker to answer and to react. And just humans, we can't do that. And then we we start to do this system, not necessary to monetizing, but it's not that I'm saying it is impossible to do that. At least in our in our model. At the beginning, uh, we decide to develop a really good uh, tool, and perhaps uh, in the future we can have that monetizing. At this moment, it is to be quicker and to have more articles and more content uh, to to our audience. I don't know if I answer uh, Laya in your question. Yes, yes, I think I think you answered. And like now, it's not like the 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 topic of the session to talk about like uh, the the about in details. But would be interested to tell you more about our software and see whether we are on the on the uh, good track because what you are doing is as well trying to. Uh, 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 do some like uh, uh, work with with data gathering also from newspapers and from everything related to public actors what they are talking about on twitter etc and then taking them to this software and trying to label them to sit to, to see whether there are claims or that could be taken to fact checking or opinions for but sure we're not yet but, in the, but for sure the we label. can we can just email 
and, yes. and do a meeting with our with your team and my team together to to look if there's something that we can exchange or, or help yes of course uh, it uh, it would be really, really great. So, uh, uh, Laura, thank you a lot for everything that uh, you shared. And I think there are a lot of things that we can take, uh, especially when you talked about these partnerships with the media and how to present ourselves to the to the mainstream media and like to benefit from the outreach that they have. The same for social media for for uh, for publicity agencies i don't, i'm not sure that it applies in lebanon because now we have a very bad economic situation and, yeah. uh, and the, the private sector is not anymore in it previously banks used to uh, allegedly say that they have a csr like social responsibility and trying to sponsor uh, 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 NGOs and media, but now they are part of the of the whole like uh, uh, corruption. Uh, yeah, but perhaps you can perhaps you can ask for an international uh, publicity agency. Perhaps it's an agency working on UK that can help you. Or, or yeah, it's a good idea to have this someone uh, because someone. you know everything uh, it costs. So when we want to do like more visibility and to invest more, like to to be able to to gain more support, but maybe this is something to think about because in, we have a, a, a diaspora all over the world uh, in Latin America and US. So maybe we can thinking, do something. I was thinking about that to find someone from your country working perhaps in US or in UK or in other country uh, that can. Uh, convince their bosses uh, to do a pro bono campaign. Also think about that for, for the agency, that's good in some cases because after they, they present to prices and in a lot of cases they win the prices. The agency that work with us every year were, uh, win three to seven prices with our campaigns. They were categories that in other way they can't present because they don't have public interesting campaigns in that or small uh, uh, budget campaigns. Then in all the time that you appro approach this type of, of companies or partnerships, think about what, they, what you can offer them. I'm sure your media is really special and it's interesting. Then, then think, think about, about what, what are your strengths and, and think why that strength can be useful for them and and i think that part of the reasons why we we obtain in some cases uh, things uh, pro bono yes uh, thank you laura for the, for these ideas <laughs> and i think what you said as well that you know, we should grow slow so this is also very important so we shouldn't like feel frustrated that we don't have enough money now. We have big dreams, but maybe like in, in like year after year, we can invest more. So we started this investment in technology with this software. And like, like you are saying, we are trying to do it slowly, but uh, of course, like more outreach would help more uh, an effective partnership with the, with mainstream media would be a great idea. And looking for these pro bono companies also would be a great idea. And also uh, and think like thinking about, about it. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, oh, and think, go ahead, no, Laura. No, go, go, go. You go. No, I was saying that thinking as well about these events that you mentioned. So uh, uh, I think like there are a lot of ideas to take from this conversation. And we are also also open to to work with your team uh, with with experience from doing this event we are doing this event since 2012 then we have also experience and failures of all this time but but what about about your big dreams and 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 grow uh, slow um i always repeat that i prefer much more a small team with with big ideas and and big uh, ambitions that the contrary there's a lot of media that have a lot of money doing bad journalists then exactly exactly be confident that if your project is useful for for your uh, society and and i'm not saying that in some of our countries 
uh, things are easy. On the contrary, I always repeat, we have the same challenge that the fat checkers from the north plus a lot of more. <laughs> then and, and obviously I'm not saying that it's easy to, to fight this information in the north. What I'm saying is that it's harder to do it, it perhaps in an environment where the government is uh, not respecting the, the free press or where the government exactly. uh, don't give you the, the public information. Data. Yeah, or, or in our country during five years, we have our National Institute of Statistics with a political intervention. They, they were data that we want, that we knew that wasn't really. It was just a, a kind of draw, but they decide to, to do it for, for, for lie or for yeah. lie citizens. And obviously there's, there's challenge. And then perhaps step by, by step in our context um, is, is better. Yes, yes. Thank you, Laura, a lot for all your uh, input and the ideas that you shared. And thank you, Evelyn, for making this exchange happen, really. <laughs> thank uh, you both. I think it was it's very important fun. not to have ideas just from, let's say, Europe or, or the US. But Latin America, there's a we lost her, but I imagine she's talking about in some cases. A lot of similarities than... with the Lebanon, we were uh, hostile for free press, etc. Definitely. And I really want to thank you both. Uh, we, I think this was really interesting. There were very interesting questions. Thank you, Layal and Laura. I think it's great that you're also willing to share everything. Um, and I will make sure that you two are connected for the future. Yeah, yeah we're going to be for sure. Uh, in, in, in my case, uh, it's a pleasure and all the time in the exchange uh, when we help others, for example, with, with, with the, how we did the campaign or how we approach the media or how we did the event. Also in that exchange, we will learn. And in some cases, we have new ideas in, in that meeting because we didn't even think about something that we can do uh, different. And, and one of the things that I always try to 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 repeat all the time to new media is try to create spaces in your team to think solutions that can be different all that we have a, a a space that is a weekly perhaps is not necessarily weekly if you have a smallest team but that we that call, we call it, it fabrica de ideas. ideas it is ideas fabric uh, where we where we invest one hour to say, okay, we used to do this in this way. Perhaps we can do it in a better way or in a different way with investing less resources and have more impact. Because if not, as journalists, it's all the time super time consuming and all the time everything is urgent. Uh, if we don't appoint the time to make innovations and to make things different, we continue repeating models that are not necessarily uh, successful models, because we exactly. repeat models from the media that we know they are in crisis. Then continue thinking big and, and step by step, you, you're going to be in the place where you want. Thank you, Laura, and definitely we will keep in touch. I will reach out if I have any any further questions. And thank you again, Evelyn. And sorry for my bad internet connection. Not your no. fault. Thank you no. so much. And in my case, sorry for my English. In some cases, I lost the, the word on if there's something that someone don't understand, you can just write me and I can just write you the, the complete con comment or, or answer. I think it will be absolutely fine. Thank you both.